Don, in your study of the visual system, uh, how can that give us a, a deeper understanding of how the brain works? Well, one of the surprising discoveries in neuroscience is that about a third of your brain's cortex is involved in vision. Billions of neurons, trillions of synapses are engaged when you simply open your eyes and look around the space around you and see objects and depths and shapes and colors and motions. For most of us, that's surprising because to the extent that we think about vision at all, we think of it as like a camera. There's a 3D world that exists objectively, whether we look at it or not, and vision is just there to take a picture like a camera of that world. Well, we don't need billions of neurons and trillions of synapses yeah. to take a picture. Ten mega pixels will do the do the job right that's right and film before that with when there weren't even megapixels yeah. and nothing electronic right, we could right. take a picture so right. so what's going on what cognitive neuroscience and computer vision studies have have discovered is that what's really going on is it's the visual system is like a reality engine in real time in just two or three hundred milliseconds you are creating all the depths the colors the motions the objects the shapes that you see Creating is an interesting word. Yes. You're not, you, you didn't say seeing, you're saying creating. That's right, you're actually constructing them and you can actually catch the visual system in the act of constructing these things. So you can, for example, trick the visual system into creating things that aren't there. Mm -hmm. So it's not that it's seeing what's there, you're giving it visual inputs and because we know the system pretty well now, we can actually trick it in lots of different ways and we can predictably make it create hallucinations of things that aren't there. So the visual system is literally fabricating or hallucinating, if you will, on the fly within two or three hundred milliseconds. Now, most of the time, uh, the word hallucination, we don't want to use it because the hallucinations, the, the constructions are very useful. They guide uh, adaptive behaviors. But nevertheless, it is construction. Hmm. Yeah, that's absolutely fascinating. And, and uh, in that construction, it, 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 it changes our perception uh, or our, our understanding of what perception is. That's right. So it's not just taking a picture. It's really trying to build um, a, a model of the world that we can use to, to guide adaptive behaviors. So our, our perceptions of color, shape, depth, and motion are really there partly so that, uh, you know, when I see this table, uh, I build a model of its shape so that I can reach out successfully and touch mm -hmm. it, pick up things and so forth. So it's to guide my behaviors. Um, there's actually um, two different visual systems. There's what's called a ventral and a dorsal visual system. The ventral system is sometimes called the, the what system. It's telling you what's out there, you know, what are the objects, what are their colors, what are their properties for, uh, for recognition purposes, mostly. The other system, the dorsal system, is sometimes called the how system, and it's a different representation of the same world, but it's for the purpose, not so much of recognition, but for manipulating it, oh. walking around it, not falling off cliffs. So it's how you interact with the world versus recognizing it. And can you have an impairment in, in one and not the other? You absolutely can. So there's remarkable uh, neurological problems where if you have a damage to certain parts of the ventral system, like you can be blind and you have no conscious or, or impaired conscious experiences of the visual world, um, but you can have what's been called blind sight. So someone can be blind, have to be led around, and they're literally helpless. They can't live on their own. But if you hold a book in front of them and you say to the person, I, you know, I'm holding a book in front of you, can you reach out and grab it? The person will say, well, I don't know where the book is and, and I can't see it. And you say, well, just humor me, just try. And the hand will reach out to the right location in space and it will orient itself in the right angle mm. to grab the book. This is called blind sight. And so it appears that the dorsal system, if it's intact in, in these, these patients, can still function to guide visually guided behaviors of the hands and so forth, um, but the person has no conscious experiences. And you can have the other uh, damage. So you can be, um, damage to the dorsal system will allow you, allow you to see and consciously what, what's out there, but you have trouble Manipulating oh, yeah, it, yeah, yeah, you, 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 space, you yeah. don't know what to do with it. Yeah. So. How about the uh, the high school question that when I have a maroon shirt and you have a blue shirt, well, you say this is maroon and I say that's blue. We both agree on that. Yes. But what I see as blue, you see as maroon. And what I see in terms of the inner feelings, uh, I see this as, uh, and we have reverse feeling. We have a, a so-called spectrum inversion. 
That's is right. that possible? Is that a silly question? And, and how does that relate to, um, although we can communicate together, so we'll never have a difference of opinion, but yet our inner experience of both is completely different. I'll, I'll start with a slightly easier one and go to that one. So what, an easier question is, um, are there natural variations in our co color perceptions among no color normal people? Okay. And the answer there is yes. So um, some, some, you know, you might have a, a brother or a friend who's colorblind, and they don't even know it until they're 20 years old and take a, cl a psychology class. Right. And it turns out that there are normal variations among most of us. Among normal males, there are two alleles of the red cone photopigment. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the two populations of men, roughly one-third of men have one version, roughly two-thirds have the other version. And when you test them in the lab, their color matches in the red, yellow end of the spectrum are different. Mm. So there's one letter difference in their DNA, mm. but their color, their conscious color experiences are different. So we know that there are differences in that. But the question that you asked again about, could your colors be really differently, uh, different from mine, is a very deep philosophical question. It was asked by John Locke in 1690 in his essay concerning human understanding. And it goes to the heart of some very deep philosophical issues today, namely reductive functionalism. Reductive functionalism says that your mental states are identical to functional states, say, of your brain. Since your conscious states are mental states, if you're a reductive functionalist, you have to say that if two people are functionally identical, they have to. then their color experiences must be identical. Right. And so a reductive functionalist has an answer to this question. They're forced to have an answer. And that um, is that the, an, an inversion is impossible. An inversion is impossible. Um, I formulated this question. It turns out that you know, this question has been around since 1690, at least, probably even before Locke. I think bright kids <laughs> yeah, right. in any century, any millennium, right. have asked this kind of question. Um, I formulated this question six or seven years ago as a mathematical question because you know, people have debated it. But, and there's been lots of articles and books even written on the question, but no one bothered to say, let's write a mathematically precise statement of this question and then prove it either way. It turns out the hard part was formalizing it. Once you formalize the question, the answer is easy. Spectrum inversion is possible in functionally identical people. And that means that reductive functionalism is false. It means that I've proven that reductive functionalism is false. Which means there's something special about consciousness. Uh, it, Potentially. Well, I, I think it means that. But one could take a step back and say it's... Uh, non-reductive functionalism. So uh, there are people like David Chalmers who would say there's a, a non-reductive approach to functionalism that would work here.